Good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Parish. Our celebrant today is Father John, assisted by Deacon John. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. We are reminded that God's justice is God's mercy and that mercy is not to be confused with presumption or permission to sin. It is precisely in giving us commandments that are not burdensome that God shows his great mercy. Let us prepare ourselves for the sacred liturgy by taking a moment of silent prayer. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us peace and consolation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Give you things for you. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. And my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be re revealed in the final time, in this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. It's the second Sunday of Easter. The Sunday that always follows Easter Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. And every year we have this same gospel passage, this gospel passage with the story of Doubt Doubting Thomas happens every single week, every single year on this Sunday. And if we think about it, there's some logical reasons for that. One logical reason is simply that um, the scripture tells us this happened one week after Easter Sunday, and this is one week later. But I think there's even a better reason why the church always gives us 
this particular gospel passage on this particular day. And the reading is, reason is that all of us have moments of doubt in our life of faith. Even for people of very, very strong faith, there are still moments of doubt. For example, take St. Teresa of Calcutta. She shared her own doubts in her private letters. They were collected into a book called Come Be My Light, The Private Writings of the Saint of Calcutta. And she wrote this in one of her letters. Where is my faith? Even deep down right in there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. My God, how painful is this unknown pain? It pains without ceasing. I have no faith. I dare not utter the words and thoughts that crowd in my heart and make me suffer untold agony. So many unanswered questions live within me. I'm afraid to uncover them because of the blasphemy. If there be God, please forgive me. This was St. Teresa of Calcutta writing to her Lord and God. She was a stereotypical nun. She was self-effacing, self-sacrificing, hard-working. She spent an hour in a holy day, every, a holy hour every morning of every day in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. She seemed to embody saint-like qualities. Yet she had doubts. She cared for the poorest of the poor in the most difficult of circumstances. Yet she had doubts. She certainly had faith. How could she have accomplished everything she did without faith? But she had her doubts at the same time. We all do. We all face doubts at times in our life. It doesn't mean we don't have strong faith, that we are not a person of faith. It's just a human reaction. One of the challenges that faces us in our life of faith is intellectual. When we consider the nature of God, the Holy Trinity, the divinity and humanity of our Lord Jesus, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and all these things we've learned about the Lord and God, some of them seem beyond our wildest dreams. Some of them seem to be unimaginable, beyond all understanding. And to make it worse, we live in a world where we can take out our cell phone, talk to our cell phone, and instantly get an answer that explains something to us that we had a question about. And we can't do that with the nature of God. We can't do that with the great mysteries that God shares with us. What we need is humility. The humility that accepts the mysteries that God has given us rather than thinking we have all the answers to all the questions concerning human life. You see, when we deny that there is something out there greater than our ability to understand, we give doubt an opportunity to creep in our lives. The thing we have to remember is that God is God, and we are not, and that humble acceptance is the attitude we need to face we need to face the intellectual doubts that we suffer from. The humble acceptance that these mysteries are given to us by God. Another challenge to our faith is physical rather than intellectual. Someone becomes seriously ill. A loved one dies, a young person dies in traumatic fashion. We fall into the trap of asking God, why did you let this happen? Or where were you when we were going through all this? We're going through a crisis right now with this pandemic, and it's natural to ask why, to wonder why God has allowed this to happen, or where God is when we need him. These are natural questions, but they also let doubt creep in. We need an attitude of trust in these types of situations. We need to trust that our Lord and God is with us, that he understands that we are suffering just as he suffered on the cross. God's answer in these situations is that he is with us, that he is carrying us through the trying times, and that he is giving us the grace and the strength to grow closer to him even as we face the difficulties the world is throwing at us. And the world throws these things at us. 
It's the world that gives us a pandemic. It's not God giving us. It's not God causing to suffer. It's living in the world where human suffering abounds. But the most common way we let doubt enter into our lives is to quit living the life of faith, to fall away from the practices of our faith, to fall away from prayer, from reading the scriptures, from participating in the sacraments. When we stop living and behaving as Catholic Christians, it becomes easy to stop believing in our Christian faith. When we give lip service to being, to living out the life of discipleship, we give doubt room to creep in. Remember what we heard in the gospel. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Our Lord Jesus wasn't just talking to St. Thomas. He was talking to each one of us. He was telling us to look around and see the grace that he has given us, that he has given our families, that he has given our nation and our world, to look around and see his gracious presence in our lives. Now, St. Thomas gives us the answer to doubt, how we are to answer the question of doubt. Whenever it creeps into our lives, we turn to the Lord and we say, my Lord and my God, and then we do him homage. Or as the possessed boy's father cried out in the ninth chapter of Mark's gospel, Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief. And then the Lord, our Savior, healed his son. You see, we need to ask for the Lord's help. We need to trust that the Lord who gives us all good things will give us strength to overcome all doubt, the strength that comes with faith. Always remember St. Thomas overcame his doubt and paid homage to our Lord and God. We can do the same as long as we humbly place our trust and our faith in the Lord our God and allow him to see us through all the challenging times that the world gives us. May God bless you and all those who love the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, Trust men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, by his resurrection, Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. Therefore, we put our trust in our Lord and humbly approach our Heavenly Father with great confidence. For the church, 
that the mercy of our risen Savior may draw all people to repentance, forgiveness, and healing for the Diocese of Joliet, that, we'll be, that we will see an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> for all world leaders, that they may never doubt the power of God's truth and love, but instead take refuge in it as they work for peace and healing for our nation and society that will foster a greater respect for all human life from natural conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, for each of us that as we struggle with the pandemic, that the Lord God will protect us, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those who are working to eradicate this scourge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all new members of the Catholic Church, that God will deepen them in faith, hope, and love. For all those who have left the practice of the Catholic faith, that they will return to the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our book of prayers, for each of us, for each member of our families, that during this Easter season, we will walk as children of the light, bearing witness to our Lord Jesus' resurrection, to all the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or suffering, that the mercy and love of Jesus Christ will bring them peace, comfort, and healing. For all those who have died, especially Joyce O'Leary Weston, that they may receive eternal rest with God and his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Joseph and Margaret Midlock, Bob and Eva Chignoli, Robert Capella and the people of St. Paul the Apostle Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism they may obtain unending happiness, 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, our apostolic administrator, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants. Who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that a reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember in your prayers our recently deceased and their grieving families, Joyce O'Leary Weston, mother of Mary Streitz, Joyce's funeral arrangements are pending. And I hope you have all had a most wonderful and blessed Easter week celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. 
We continue to this great celebration to Pentecost. So keep that Easter spirit as we continue to face the challenges of the time we live in. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.